find our profile here. One fellow is on the ladies. He'll easily be able to pick ratchet for out. He's got long, beautiful tusks. He's up ahead. If you look to the front of the field, it's the big fellow there to the left of the pond. Other elephants hide in his tusks right now, but when we get closer, he'll be able to get a good look. In fact, to his right, where the pond is, just above the pond, there's a wooden fence. There is an overlook. You can come back and get a nice close look at the elephants. African elephants on the left. See if our little baby boy is up. Little baby in there, just about four months old. He might still be in the enclosure, so if you come back, you can get a look at him from that overlook. Almost four months old. Very special little guy. First birth of an African elephant, we might be a little short of the stock. And speaking of our hoof stock, looking right back into East Africa, the black animals keep buffalo. Look at their horns. Solid horn. One piece goes right across the head. This is the true buffalo. We'll see another animal later, and I'll show you a difference. Who knows what a group of rhinos is called? I always thought it was a herd. It's a crash. So we have a crash of seven white rhinos to our right. Hot and dry in Africa. So their skin has to be tight. They can't lose moisture off of it. Grass short and dry, no moisture back from it. Look at the lip. Another name for them is a square short dry grass. Many predators after their youngsters, so they need the two sharp horns to protect their babies. I think you can tell that eyesight is not the strongest sense of a rhino. Little eyes way down on the head. But watch how their ears keep moving. Hearing and scent, they're a large aggressive animal, so everybody's happier with them in their Asian planes on the right, a couple of white meat cranes. And if you look back on the left, you'll see a feeder, some horns sticking up. Phil is their guarding his food. These are Barbary sheep. In North Africa, they're called Budads. Obviously, they can hold their own against the zebra. To our right, that little tan and white animal, not a baby, full grown. Persian greater gazelle. Their means of self-preservation is speed. They can run up to 62 miles an hour. If you look across the field, you'll see a rhino at the feeder. These are the Indian rhinos. Another crash up ahead. Five babies in the field, three girls, two boys. Vertical migrators. When it's warm, they go up to higher altitudes. When it cools off, they come down lower. Here they do that daily, but in the Himalayas where they live, they do it seasonally. Our youngest rhino is to the right. They live in tall grass, so they stay cool like us. They lose moisture off that loose skin, just like we sweat. They can afford to do that because they get moisture back from their grass. Look at their lip. It's not square. It comes to a tip. Semi-prehensile. With that tip, they can pull the tall grass into their mouth. They can also tuck it under. They may find some grazing on the short grass. Not as many predators after those babies as the African rhino. So the one horn is enough to protect their little ones. Under the trees, sunlight filters through the leaves, makes that spotted pattern on the ground. Twelve times. When the male's antlers are full grown, they can have up to 12 fish. Tell they're from Somalia. Right now, their future is bleak. With civil unrest in the area, there's a trickle-down effect to the animals. When people are starving, they're looking for food. Sibian ibex goats. The enclosures on the right are called bomas, and again, I'll need your help. Right now, this first boma is a maternity ward. So if we could please keep our family the Persian goated gazelle. The big the, the opening to our right where the gate is, go just left. There's a ladder by the wall just in front of that ladder. The little baby's under the tree. And there's the other two. The little one under the tree is the youngest. 
four babies out there. So you can tell the captive breeding went very well. So well, they have been released into the Arabian Peninsula where they're now protected. That white coat keeps them cool. They can push the rhinos to our run. These Indian rhinos right there. That's exactly how the black rhino got their name. The scientific group that was in Africa naming animals at the time say what called what, uh, saw rather what they called the black rhino as it had come out of water just like these, but they didn't know that. They named them thinking it was the skin color. They were actually just wet rhinos. At the end of our safari, well, hopefully we'll see a black rhino and we'll see she's gray. Tan and white animals are Indian black buck antelope, and they don't look black. These are the females. To the right, there's the fellow laid by himself, black and white spiral horns. The guys pick territories out here. They'll stay in that area, and if they, they like this area nice and high, they could be on the lookout for predators if there were any. But as it starts to get a little later in the day, they like to get lower and tuck in, so they've moved into that other fellow's area. Indian gower cattle are the largest of the wild cattle. They can get up to seven feet at their shoulders. Look how their horns curve in. Whenever you see animals with horns that turn inward like that, it tells you they travel in large, tight herds. That way when they run, they won't bore this. And they've been known to migrate. So at times those deer have actually been spotted, so are her, the three fellas with horns, and two ladies. But they're all different antelope. Solid orange female that's facing left, she's a Uganda cob. The red walking leaf, they can jump 10 feet high, 30 feet across. So to something chasing them, it would be like trying to catch popcorn, because it's popping. Tuck and cover. When babies are first born, they don't have a scent. So their moms will hide them in the grass, blending in with the dirt in between the rocks. Then mom walks away. She doesn't want to be standing next to her little one if a predator sees her. If that baby is good and listens to mom and stays nice and still, a predator could walk right by without seeing it or smelling it. Looking into North Africa on the left, the white animal, scimitar horned oryx, think after the scimitar sword, which curves like the horns. Again, that white coat tells you they come from the desert area. They're a highly endangered animal. Species found in Africa. As we go by, look at these washes. Many times we find the oodads tucked away in there. Looks like we won't be lucky right now. To our right, if you look across, the Beringo or Rothschild giraffe, tallest of the nine subspecies. The youngest baby, palm tree leaning to the left, go to the tree to the left of that and look right behind it. You'll see the little baby standing on the road. We have a chance to see some antler patterns here on the left. Antlers, I've mentioned, except for the Each of they go a little longer, so we can tell who the fellas are here. We can tell who the older guys are. When they first start growing, that's when you see the velvet. Right now, there's blood going through that bone. During this growth period, it's the fastest growing bone there is. Fuzzy coat gives them insulation from the water. They're between three and 600 pounds. So you would think with that deer, Indian hog deer, think for that body shape. They look like little hogs. <coughs> At the feet or to the left of the road, more of the white lip deer. You can see the muzzle. It looks like they have a white duck mustache. Another bachelor herd under the tree here, a bachelor herd of rams. Transcaspian burial shape. Here's the moms and lambs headed up. Twins, not that uncommon with sheep. We've had quite a few birds over the past three weeks. Several sets of twins and a few singles. There's the